Welcome to the Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Today we're going to be talking to a representative from the Hare Krishna religion. A Hare Krishna movement came to the United States about 50 years ago, and I have with me H.D. Goswami. He is a senior leader of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and you also have a Ph.D., and you speak seven fluent languages. That's amazing. Why so many? Make sure I get my lunch on time wherever I go. <laughs> no, I uh, actually all the languages I learned, I learned just in the course of my work. That's amazing. So how long have you been a Hare Krishna? 48 years. 48 years. And were you, what were you before that, prior to Hare Krishna? Well, I was a student in Berkeley. I was born in a Jewish family. But I, I never thought of my adoption of this uh, spiritual path as changing religion. I didn't have a sectarian idea that I'm leaving one religion and joining another. I thought I'm simply taking on the spiritual technology. So were you participating in the Jewish religion prior to becoming a Hare Krishna? Yes, oh, okay. and, and I still do. You still do. What's the difference between the Hare Krishna religion and the Jewish religion? Um, well, first let's talk about the similarities. They're both uh, strongly monotheistic, believing in one personal God. In what is called Hinduism, that's a whole story, it's actually, Hinduism is actually a recent word. In the traditions, let's say, if they come from India, and also in Judaism, there are many, many different forms of Judaism. The tradition we follow, which is called popularly Hare Krishna, is actually an ancient tradition from South Asia called Vaishnavism. So let me ask, I don't understand why a Jew would want to become a Hare Krishna well, you already have it made. You're the, you're the chosen one. <laughs> Actually, if you study the uh, Jewish tradition, uh, to be chosen is to be chosen as a servant of God, to follow God's will and to teach other people in the world about God. So, that's the, and so anyone who responds to that most noble task of trying to faithfully carry out the Word of God and trying to teach others about God, uh, then you're chosen. So you're chosen for that service. So my mother, my father, they always stressed education. And so I was serious about God, I think that was the point, so that I wanted to get as much information, as much knowledge as I could about God. And uh, so again, it's not a question of rejecting a religion it was a question of taking the religion very seriously that I was born into and trying to get as much knowledge as I could about God. Were, were there something missing in the Jewish religion that you are now getting from the Hare Krishna? Well, I don't want to speak badly about uh, about Judaism. It's um, there are spiritual resources in Krishna consciousness, which I think are very beneficial. Let, let me put it in this way. If you look at the history of philosophy in this world, and by philosophy here, I mean like sort of a systematic, rational approach to trying to understand who are we, where do we come from, what is the nature of the world, how do we get reliable knowledge, political philosophy, ethics, all these things, systematic philosophy. Systematic philosophy arose in two parts of the world, which are in Europe and India. So, for example, there is Chinese philosophy, but it tended to come, there are wisdom traditions in China, but in terms of systematic philosophy, it came with Buddhism from India. So let me do this because I don't yeah. know about all that. Right. And give me a yes or no. Well, there's something missing in Judaism that caused you to look to Hare Krishna. And are you getting that which was missing? I wanted to get more knowledge about God. And you wasn't able to get that in Judaism? Uh, again, at least let's, let's say in, in the forms of Judaism that were presented to me, uh, I, I wanted to know more. And, uh, and so I, but again, I think it was Judaism that gave me the inspiration to so, look for that knowledge So are God. you saying to me, no, uh, I mean, it, it, you my, couldn't, there was something missing in Judaism, my, right? If by Judaism you mean, for example, the post, 
Uh, I know, but you're not answering the question. I, I am, you, but no, 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 no. Missing I, I, I'll, 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 I'll tell you why I'm answering it my own way. Why? I have a reason because I don't want to offend any other religion. And, but you're and, leaving and, me out, so I'm offended. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't help that. <laughs> I, give I'm, me a I, yes or no, and then you can give me the other stuff. If by okay, okay, okay. Missing. If, if by Judaism, if by Judaism, you mean. A particular set of rituals and beliefs. But I don't have that a meeting. I'm trying to, me. to learn about both religions. Yeah, so yeah. What I'm asking you, would, as a Jew, yes. was there something missing in Judaism that uh, caused well, you to look to Hare Krishna? It's yes and no. I mean, that's just well, the way. You're saying yes, so let's do the yes part. What was missing? What was missing, I think, was a greater body of knowledge about the nature of God. However, it was Judaism that inspired me to look for God. And so, to me, in a, in a larger sense, Judaism also includes, or any serious religion, includes that quest to understand God. So therefore, I, I, it's not that I rejected Judaism, it's not that I think that, that it's, it's, you know. So what have you learned about God as a Hare Krishna that you didn't yeah. know okay. as a Jew? Okay, let's go into that. And uh, I say I found a, a, a more clear articulation. I'm not saying this is not in Judaism, but I found a more clear articulation of the nature of the soul. Sort of an uncompromising, unabashed affirmation that we are eternal spiritual beings. The body is simply a covering of that eternal soul. That there is a personal spiritual world that there can be a spiritual body, a spiritual form, and God can have spiritual form. The Old Testament says that we're made in the image of God. Again, these descriptions are there in different forms of mystic Judaism. It's just that uh, this was not really talked about. It's there in the Old Testament, but it's... Why see, don't they talk about that? Well, because for one thing, what we call Judaism today is really uh, rabbinic Judaism. When uh, the Jews revolted against the Roman Empire, were defeated, the Second Temple was destroyed when they revolted again around the year 90 and they were actually excluded from Jerusalem. And so they kind of circled the wagons and they regrouped around so rabbinic Judaism based on interpreting the Talmud. So are you and so saying that, so that, that particular... Ask, so are you saying that Judaism today is not the real deal? I'm not saying it's not the real deal. I'm saying it's just a part of what used to be Judaism. Judaism, if you look at, and this is something which any scholar will tell you, if you look at Judaism, let's say around the time of Jesus, it was much more diverse, there were more options, and <laughs> the type of rabbinic Judaism that we have today is, is just a part of what used to be a broader tradition. So let's go back to the Harry Krishna. What's your role in the, in the organization? You're like the big doll in L.A., right? <laughs> I, well, it's an organization, institution, has different positions, so I am a guru in the sense that I'm authorized to formally initiate new disciples or new members. The guru-disciple relationship is, is an important part of the traditions that come from India. I'm also what's called a sannyasi, which is like a priest. It means I, I, I was married when I was much younger, and I gave up family life and I dedicated myself to teaching. So um, what does guru, they look up to you, the other members? Some people do, yeah. yeah. And how do you feel about that? I feel that, um, that with great power comes great responsibility. So I think whatever position I have, whatever respect I give, get, it's not meant for my own selfish gratification. You like being a guru? I like getting the job done. How about and, and, do you like being a guru? Uh, you know, it's just, it's irrelevant to me. It's not something I, it's just like, do I like driving down Pico Boulevard to the studio? So do you like being a guru? No, I like, what I like is trying to do my job and my, and, and my, my job as I understand it is to try to bring spiritual knowledge into the world, try to make the world a better place. I mean, everyone should know by now there's something wrong with this world. Yeah. So if you want to build a house, do you enjoy having a toolbox? Yeah. So, so I appreciate the fact that within this culture, I operate in the spiritual culture, that I have some tools that I can use to try to get the job done. 
So you had a family prior not to Not children, becoming, but a wife. Just a wife prior to becoming a Hare Krishna. Oh, no, tr prior to becoming a sannyasi, a renounced preacher. Oh, I see. And so did you get rid of her because of the promotion? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I got rid of her. <laughs> Why she's, did you? She's, uh, she's a great person. She's a, she was... Um, Is she a Jew? She, no, she was actually American Italian from oh. Revere, Massachusetts. She um, is a, I think, an exceptional person and an exceptional teacher. So why do you stay with her then if she's so exceptional? Because uh, I felt very strongly that I was born for a particular calling, which was to focus all of my attention on teaching. So let me ask, we talked about you not having on the Harry Krishna. Right clothes and things. Right. They were like these sheets wrapped around them, right? <laughs> Colored sheets. Tie-dye. Why don't you have on those things? <laughs> Why don't you have on those things? Okay. Good question. Because I strongly believe that if we study history and study social science, it's clear that if the Hare Krishna movement is ever going to achieve its goals, which are to really try to Pow to try to powerfully bring, you know, bring spiritual knowledge to the world, we cannot uh, present ourselves in the West in a very exotic, foreign way. I think all history and all social science shows it just doesn't work. And there is a, the idea that somehow, let's say, Indian robes are intrinsically spiritual, I think is just, I think it's mythological. So are you rejected for dressing this way and thinking that way? Uh, it's been a battle, to be honest. It's with been leaders. a battle? Yeah, because, you know, in any conservative religious society, people become very attached to traditions. And, and, and you know, there are leaders who think that somehow you're closer to God if you wear Indian clothes. Or if you, I mean, every religion. Every, in every but religion you... I would think, though, you coming from being a Jew yeah. to becoming a Hare Krishna, Look like you will follow their religion rather than trying to change it to the way you want it to be. Well, it gets down to the point that in any religion there are certain universal, essential principles, and then there's all kinds of accretions, all kinds of customs and traditions that are picked up along the way. And so my point is that if America is ever going to accept the knowledge we're trying to give, we have to present a spiritual science, not an ethnic tradition. And so even in our tradition. You see, my whole point is that if you look at the history of this tradition, which goes back thousands of years, what you find is that all the great teachers did that. They adapted, they adjusted. And so this idea that, no, you have to be wear Indian clothes, you have to eat Indian food, you have to do Indian music, that itself is superficially keeping the tradition. So but, you but, but, but it just It's superficially keeping the tradition, but actually it's breaking with tradition. Because it's, it's a tradition which keeps the essentials, but adapts, you know, in terms of external things. And so trying to say that just external superficial things like clothes and recipes are somehow essential spiritual principles, that itself is breaking with tradition. Do you eat their food? Uh, we are strict vegetarians. We're strict vegetarians, so I certainly follow the principle. Again... But you don't eat the food either? Uh, yeah, I can, see my point no, no, is... No, I'm getting the feeling that you don't eat the food either, you're just rejecting the whole... No, no, not at all. No, you, not at you, all. Do you eat Hare Krishna food? No, no, but, there, but that's my whole point. There is no such thing as Hare Krishna food. Hare Krishna food means that you take your food and before you eat it, you offer it to God. Which, by the way, is a custom we find in every religion. But they do have a special kind of food. I've gone to their cafe. I know that, but those have, are just... Do you eat those, that food at the cafe? Sure, I can. I'm not against Indian food. It's not no, that but I'm, do you eat it? You're not answering that. Of course, I eat it. And so, do you? Still but not eat regularly it? for the simple reason <laughs> that it's not my taste. It's like if for, to me, do you still eat Jewish food? I eat what I like. Uh, what but the, you see, because, hey, wait a second. We get, let's back up for a second. The principle here is, in our, from my point of view, that we should not eat food that's obtained with violence, slaughtering, innocent, and highly... And this is a teaching of Hare Krishna? It's a teaching, I think, of any civilized well, how tradition. how about Hare Krishna? Do they teach that? Because Absolutely. that's what I'm trying to learn Yeah, about. yeah. Okay, but, but, but wait. This, this you have to understand. Otherwise, you're going to miss the whole thing. There are two points here, and we've got to separate them. One point is a, an ethical principle. 
which is that we try to eat food which doesn't involve mindless brutality toward innocent creatures. And healthy food, of course. And, and, and food that's not obtained in, in cruel ways. Now, within that category, you can eat American, Chinese, Indian, Thai, Mexican. Oh, okay, so you eat everything. Let me ask, uh, do you teach, do, um, do you teach about Jesus Christ? Do you believe in Jesus I, as a Harry Krishna? I believe in Jesus as he presented himself and not necessarily as... How about as, Harry Krishna? Do they believe Jesus is the son of God? Uh, I would say that, um, yeah, I would say Jesus is, I would say, almost universally accepted within the Hare Krishna movement as a divine figure. But again... But do they, do they teach... But, but wait, wait. I, see, I, I, I want to learn about the religion. Do I, they I, teach that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Yes or no? Oh, I have to... You could do the sidebar stuff, but... No, it's not a sidebar. Be, because I'm I, trying to learn about the religion. I know, but if you're you, not if, telling I, me. No, no I, I, if you would let me speak, then you'll know exactly what I think. Give me a yes or no first, and then what you think. Do we teach Jesus and God? Yes. But here's the point. It's not a sidebar. It's the middle bar. And that is... That when I, because I've studied early Christian history a lot. I've studied the life of Jesus a lot, you know, as a scholar. And what I see is there's two things here. There's Jesus and the life of Jesus. And then there's the later interpretations, such as those by Paul in the letter to the Romans. And other, I mean, and all kinds of other people. So do I accept all the near contemporary interpretations of Jesus? No. Do I accept what Jesus said about himself? Yes. Well, Paul and those guys taught that Jesus is the Son of God. And, but we're all sons and, of God. But we're talking about Jesus. But we're all sons of God. But they, listen to me. Let, me. let me ask this. Yeah. Uh, Paul taught that, and others taught that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. And he came for our salvation. He sacrificed his life so that he could buy us back and we could have a way back to the Father. No man get to the Father unless he go through the Son. Is that what you're teaching as a Harry that, that's, Krishna? That's what some person wrote in the book of John. Well, are you teaching The other that? three got, again, I teach, I accept what Jesus taught, not what other lesser people. Do I accept the authority of some guy in Western Turkey who wrote a book several generations after Jesus and claimed that Jesus said in Greek that I'm the only way? No. I don't. You don't believe he's the only way? I believe what Jesus said about himself, not about what people generations later, some of whom didn't even know Jesus very well, and all the claims. I, I mean, you know, you don't want to get but into this. Wait, 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 you, hold it. But everyone that you read, you don't want to get into this. They really knew you Jesus. Don't, you, no, no, they didn't know. If you look at the letters, Paul is almost half the New Testament. His letters and people who were his assistants, like Luke, who was his secretary. Now, if you look, according to scholars, if you look at all the letters of Paul and just extract from them hard data, biographical information about Jesus, there's, you could fit it on one little index card. What did Jesus say about himself? Who did he say he was? Jesus said that he came to teach about God. Jesus hadn't died. As what far did as Jesus say he was the son of God? Calling someone the son of God, no, Jesus... That's not what I asked. Did Jesus say... Jesus claimed we are all sons of God. You're not asking my question again for some reason. Did Je I'm trying to learn about the, the your reason, religion. The reason is because you're not, not letting answer, me. I would answer your questions if you would allow me. I know, but when I ask you, you don't ask me. Yeah, but I'm not on trial. You go to something yeah, 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 but, but you're not a and lawyer and I'm not in a witness stand. You know We're having a, a conversation. Lawyer. We're having a conversation. I know, but you're not answering my question. Well, you're not allowing me to answer it in a way that makes sense to me. Okay, I'm you, not on trial here. I I don't want but just. I, I, I don't way. want questions fired at me. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. But I, I can. I'm that. an adult. I can explain myself. But I need that first, and then you can do the sidebar stuff. It's not sidebar. It's uh, not sidebar. Okay, We're having a dialogue. Right. We're having a dialogue. So if I tell you that I feel it's really important you understand something, because as we know, in yes or no questions, people can get the wrong impression. Okay, let's do it this way. Did Jesus teach? that he was the son of God, and no man get to the Father except through him. Yes or no, and then you can respond. No. He did not teach that. What did the he The first teach? part, uh, yeah, Jesus definitely saw himself as the son of God. Did Jesus believe that no one else could get to God? No, he never said that. In fact, if you look at what Jesus said to the Pharisees, he kept calling them hypocrites. To call someone a hypocrite is not to reject their teachings, it's to say you're not following what you teach. Right. Well, he called them a hypocrite because they were not 
They were not giving the people the truth. They were not living up to that truth. And they were like gurus over the people, but they were not, they were controlling the people rather than setting the people free. Am I right about that? That was the opinion of Jesus, yeah. Right. And so does Harry Krishna but, 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 teach but then, that? But then again, just to be honest, what we know about Jesus was written later. It's not that there were you know, people who knew Jesus writing down what he said. And so a generation or two later, we have people claiming that Jesus said this or that. So do I, do I think that those accounts are absolutely accurate? No, I don't. I think there's some truth in them, but I don't think they're do absolutely accurate. Do you know accurate. Jesus? Do I know Jesus? I mean, in the, way I, in the way I'm talking to you, I mean, I think I understand who Jesus was, yes. And so in, in summing it up about Jesus, who was he exactly in your mind? A representative of God. A representative, okay. I read, oh, let me ask, do you, um, do you guys teach about sin, that you need to repent and be born again and to have a Christian religion? We teach that um, if one wants to approach God, yeah, that you can't, we can't go on sinning and, and, and approach God. So you need to repent from sin. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like even in a court, if, if it, sometimes a jury will, you know, give someone a harsh pen, uh, punishment because there was no remorse. I mean, if I do something wrong, if I try to exploit the creation of God instead of serving God, and then I have no remorse, then obviously I, I don't really understand. And what is sin? Sin means doing something which is ultimately harmful to myself and others. Is it sin the ego nature of man? I think that we are originally pure souls, but that we have become corrupted, and now we have to get back to our pure nature. So as a, uh, uh, a Hare Krishna, did you repent of your sins? Uh, did I repent of my sins? I realized that I uh, was living in the wrong way and that I should adopt a, a spiritual life rather than going on trying to exploit myself, my own body and trying to exploit other people's bodies. And so you were living the wrong way by exploiting people's body? Well, I was young, you know, I was a young guy. <laughs> Um, I read that in 1972, you accepted a vow of lifelong celibacy. celibacy. Is that true? Yes. Why did you make that decision? Because in our tradition, sex is only within marriage. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And did that help you draw closer to God? I think it did help me in my spiritual life. Right on. Um, do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Is that being taught as a higher Christian? Oh, yeah. Do you believe we're in a fallen state? Do you, do you have love? I, yeah, I would like to have, again, if you, if you look at like water, water can be 98% pure, 100% pure, 79% pure. It's not all or nothing. So I would say that yes, I have love, but as I advance in my own spiritual practice, I think my love becomes more and more pure. So you do have love, but not the best kind. I think I have a pretty, you know, I wouldn't give my, I'd give myself pretty good grade. Do you have anger? Do I have anger? I'd say I have some anger. You have anger? Yeah, we all do. No, do you have anger? I have some. And can you have anger and love? Yeah. How is that? Why? Is, because... Is, because is, there some, a, is there love and anger? Yes. There's there, love there can, and there anger? Can, not necessarily. It depends so on... So you were just yelling at me. Were you loving me? I think so. <laughs> so you can have love and anger? It depends on what one's motive is. But anger destroys. No, anger, no, up. the Bible talks all the time about righteous anger. It depends, I mean, there, there is a kind anger of- Anger is of your father the devil. There, there, some kinds of, Jesus himself, when he went into the temple and started oh, you know, throwing go. people out. He wasn't angry. Uh, okay. Why, is there any proof that His, he was angry? Okay, from a behavioral point of view, he engaged in activities which appeared to be very angry. But he wasn't angry though. Fine, I could say I wasn't really angry. But we're talking about Jesus. We already admitted you have anger. Uh, yeah, but how much I have? It doesn't matter. Any little yeah, bit it, of no, anger no, is no, evil. No, 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 no. Actually, we all have viruses in our body. I don't body. have anger. Uh, you can have other faults. But you I don't know, have you know, anger. You know, it's just like bacteria. Everyone has bacteria in their body, but beneath a certain level, you're not going to get sick. And so even if someone is not perfect, 
they may have an amount, let's say, of anger, which still does not prevent them from doing good things and, and, and having a good life. But so how, so I, I don't... I don't but what you're saying is you're serving to God. No, you're I'm not. To, no, 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 I'm not. You're serving to God of anger. No, and no, you're no, serving no, to God no, of love. No, that, you can't that, serve that, that is but not... But you a, are saying that. No, I'm not. But you say you have anger and I'm you not have love. serving anger. I didn't come here today. I came here today to serve God. I'm talking to you to serve God. But now you have... But you... I'm not you serving... What, is it, what does it mean to serve someone? To be a righteous man representing your creator. To serve... Who is for, for, love no, no, no. All no. The I, time. I, I think you're, you're wildly exaggerating what's going on here. I mean, to serve someone... I'm not serving anger. I'm not dedicating my life to serving anger. But you are serving. When it comes, it destroys. You see, this idea, moment, th 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 this idea that you're either absolutely perfect or you're absolutely bad, I think is madness. Why is that? Why? Because I think it's not the real world. It's just like, for example, you know, you may make a rolling stop when you're driving through L.A. at a stop sign, but it's not that therefore you're taken to jail and executed. I, I mean, there are degrees. Degrees are significant. But what does that have to do with being a good person or a bad person? I think, I, I think, that, I think that the fact that someone at some time in their life may get a little angry doesn't mean... Well, then you're better than everyone. So, so right, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't serve two guys. So if you have anger... I think, you, you, you know, you know, you know, I, I, I could, I, not, I could, you know, good. just to be very honest with you, because you're honest with me, I could make, based on this short conversation, I could make a list of certain behavior traits in you, which I might not consider to be admirable. Like who, for example? I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, get into that. No, tell me. Love me enough to tell me. Okay, I don't think you're a good listener. You don't? No, not at all. Why not? Because you don't listen. Because I say something and then you misrepresent it, and no, then I say it again. No, because I would ask you a question and you would go all around Marlboro. That's, Marlboro's that's your opinion. I I, th I think I, th I think there's a certain kind of respect we can show people where we allow them to explain but things in their own way. But you're not respecting me by how, not asking However, my question. okay. So look, I mean, frankly, based on this conversation, do I think you're morally superior? No, I don't. You don't. No. Now you're judging me. No. You just say that I'm this and that, and now... I'm just saying what you said about yourself. You know, um, <laughs> Let me I, ask I, you. anyway, my consolation here is I, I think that a lot of people that watch this show in the future will understand what's really going on here. So you can say this and that and the other thing to me, and if I say one thing to you, then I'm judging you, and I'm this, and I'm that, and, 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 and how dare I say that you're not morally superior. I didn't say how dare you say that. I don't mind you saying that. Yeah. What is a man? What is a man? Yes. It's a soul within a body. And so, uh, are you a man? I'm a soul within a body. What happens to the soul once you die? The soul is eternal. What happens to it? The soul goes wherever it deserves to go. And where is that? It depends on the behavior of the person. And, and where does it go according to the behavior? It depends on if, if, if one has lived a good life, goodness is rewarded. And if I do uh, things that harm myself or others, that's punished. God is infinitely patient. Patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. Right. And an angry person and, and, don't have that. And, and, and what? An angry person don't have patience. Uh, again, I will let the viewers judge for themselves <laughs> what's going on here. Does Harry Krishna teach no abortion? Yes. Oh, good. How about same sex marriage? You support that? Um, I don't really have a position on that. Uh, as far as what I think about, I, I believe that some people are wired to be homosexuals. All the science seems to show that. I believe that ultimately the goal for everyone is to go beyond attachment to the body and rather they should be attached to God and the soul. And so I think whatever someone's orientation is, whatever someone's material desires are, it's a gradual process to get past those desires. Meaning so, that they can overcome it, being a homosexual. I think just as heterosexual, I mean, I, mean, I, think, that, I think that monogamy is in a sense an antidote to promiscuity. So do you believe that they can overcome being a homosexual? In the same way that heterosexual can overcome being a heterosexual. I want to ask that again because I want you to answer that question. Do you believe that a man or a woman can overcome being a homosexual? 
I think we need, first of all, we need to talk about sexuality. The gender, I, don't, I think homosexuality... You see, you're not answering the question, right? I don't think you ask good questions. I, 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 I think homosexuality <laughs> is a subcategory of sexuality. So I think what is true about sexuality will also be true about the different subcategories of it. It's just like if something is true about, let's say, fruit trees, then it's going to be true about different so fruit trees. So you're not trees. going to answer that question. Let me ask. I'm, do what you, I'm going to do, do is I, I'm that, going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm God. going to, I'm going to answer the question you should have asked. I'm going, I'm, and, and, and that is, in other words, if, someone, if someone's real choice, if someone's real choice as a human being is to be, as a homosexual, promiscuous or monogamous, I believe that monogamy is a step forward beyond promiscuity and that gradually everyone, heterosexual or homosexual, has to work toward detaching themselves from the false identification with the body because if you understand yourself perfectly as a pure soul you're not going to be into sexuality whether it's hetero or homo you're going to be into your own soul and your own love of god meaning that they can overcome it then if they go down this road that you're talking about yes i they i think i think both the heterosexual and the homosexual need to gradually but understand but i didn't ask you about the heterosexual yeah yeah but but you're taking the cowardly way out you need to realize that i didn't ask you that and this, this is the, uh, you this is the paragon of virtue, cowardly, <laughs> judgmental, uh, but sinful, you angry. Though? You're like, I, you I hope someday I can be as humble as you. Um, Did you not answer my question? I, I'm trying to. You're, you're I, going around my question. No, because, I'm, because you're not, you, don't, you don't ask very good questions. That's why you're going around them? I'm trying to help you to ask good questions. Uh, did you have fun? Yes, of course. <laughs>